Okay, so looking at this example, we want to analyze this rational function and identify the parts of the given rational function. So the first thing I would do is I would find my factors for the top and the bottom. So for the for the numerator, we see 2x minus 3 is already factored, but we still need to factor x squared plus 7x plus 12. And that would actually factor into x plus 4 times x plus 3. So that means for r of x, our top factor factors are going to be 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 3. For the bottom, we have 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. First thing I would look here is say, I've got a common number in all of the terms. So I would factor out 3, and I would be left with x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then factor out that, and I'm left with x with 3 and 1, the middle number is positive, so that means that 3 needs to be positive. So my factors on the bottom would be 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. So now I want to look for the holes. Okay? the holes in my, in my, actually, I want to do the domain first, come to think of it, before the holes. So the domain would be saying on the bottom, I know x cannot equal, well, x plus 3 would be negative 3, and x cannot equal a positive 1. For my holes, remember the holes are the common factor. So if I look at this, I see that x plus 3 is common on both the top and the bottom. So I know x plus 3, when I set it equal to 0, that means x equals negative 3. So the whole is at negative 3. So the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at the x-intercepts. Okay, and remember the x-intercepts, they exclude the holes, okay? And <clears throat> the other thing is when we're looking at x-intercepts, x-intercepts are where the denominator, so this is where p of x equals zero. So we have two factors on the top. We have the 2x minus 3, and we also have the x plus 4. We exclude the x plus 3 because it is the whole. So we end up with x equals 3 halves and x equals negative 4. So when you're listing them for the x-intercepts, you can just put negative 4 comma 3 halves. All right, so on the next one, we want to look for the y-intercepts. And remember, y-intercepts occur when the function r of x, I mean r of 0, when, when we 
when we put in zero for X. Okay, and we want to use the simplified function. So we don't need to include the X plus three. We only want to take R of zero and put in zero for the X's excluding the holes. Okay, so what we end up with is 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, times 4 divided by 3 times negative 1. So we end up with negative 12 over negative 3. So our x intercept, or I'm sorry, y intercept is going to happen at 4. When y equals 4, x equals 0, y equals 4. So to find our vertical asymptote, this is where we set the denominator or the q of x equal to 0. And we also want to exclude the whole, see this is why it's good to find the holes first. The, you know, the common factor on the numerator and the denominator, because then we don't need to worry about using it when we're looking for this information. So that means the only thing we care about is three set to zero does not work. So we only care when X minus one equals zero. So our vertical asymptote this is going to be an equation, so you want to type this as x equals 1, because the asymptote is a line. So our next step is we now want to look for um, we want to now look for a horizontal asymptote. So if we look up here, we have an x and we have an x squared. So this means this top function has a degree of 3. The bottom function has a degree of 2. So in this case, the numerator degree is greater than the denominator degree. So there is no horizontal asymptote. So we would just type in none if, if you're doing the Desmos activity. You type in none. So since there isn't a horizontal asymptote, that means there must be an oblique one. And what we need to do is we need to combine the factors on the R of X at the top so since they're big factors, I personally like to use the box method of multiplying. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. So on the side, I have 2x minus 3. Okay, see how I put the 2 and the minus 3? On the top, I'm going to put x squared, 7x, and then 12. And then you just treat it like a multiplication box. So 2x times x squared would be 2x cubed. 2x times 7x would be 14x squared. 2, 2, 2x times 12 is 24x. Now I do the next row. Negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 7x would be negative 21x. And the last one, negative 3 times 12, is negative 36. So when you do this box method of multiplication, you will notice that diagonals 
have the same the same degree on their their variables. So my combined variable would be 2x cubed negative 3 plus 14 would leave me with a positive 11x squared negative 21x plus a 24x would be a negative 3x and then minus 36. All right so the next step is is we now want to do our division. So we want to take our 3x squared plus 6x minus 9 and divide it into our 2x cubed plus 11x squared minus 3x minus 36. All right, so you're going to look at this squared and see this first number is 2 and think, well, how am I going to do that? Well, what you have to do is you have to set up a fraction. We want to get rid of the 3, and to get cubed, that means we're going to be over the x. So the 3 is going to be on the bottom of our fraction, and what we want our number to be is going to be on the top. Because when you multiply 2 thirds times 3, the 3's cancel out, and you're left with 2x cubed, 2 thirds times 6, well, 6 is divisible by 3 and leaves you with 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, so it's going to be plus 4x squared. Here, let me move that up some. And then 2 thirds times a negative 9 is going to be a minus, and 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. And then remember, we're going to subtract everything. So these cancel out. 11 minus 4 leaves me with 7x squared. Negative 3 minus a negative 6 makes it a positive 6. So it'll be plus 3x. And then bring down the negative 36. So once again, I can't multiply anything times 3 to get 7 as a whole number. So that means I need to put 3 on the bottom of my fraction. And what I want my number to be on the top, which is 7. So I'm left with 7x squared. Three, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. So 14x. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this is going to be a minus... Um, 21. Now at this point, I could go on and finish this and I could say I would end up with negative, what do I do here? This 3x. I could end up with a negative um, 11x minus 15. But remember we said this is the remainder. And when we're solving for an oblique asymptote, we don't care about the remainder. We only care about this part of our equation. So that means our oblique or slant asymptote is going to be located at y equals 2 thirds x plus 7 thirds. So let's look at the next page. This is just the graph drawn of the information we found. So we said the whole was at negative 3. 1, 2, 3, this is the whole and it's at negative 3. The x-intercepts we said were at 4, negative 4, which is right here. So that matches up. And we also said it was at 3 halves. That's our x-intercepts. Our y-intercept is at 4.
our vertical asymptote, that's the one that goes up and down. This is at x equals 1, and see how it goes across 1? We said there was no horizontal asymptote, and we can see why, because our graph curves, and that means we had our slant asymptote would be at y equals 2 thirds x plus 7 thirds. So now